Hello beauties and uglies, I got here with me today Dr. Yasu Yasubini He's gonna answer some of the questions related to stem cells in skincare So Yasu, can you introduce yourself a bit to my audience? Hi Kit, how are you? Uh, it's nice to see you again Yeah, um, yeah I've been working on stem cells for the past 15 years This is where I got my degree um, from Oxford in stem cells And I've been working on stem cells but perhaps for other applications like for cancer therapy and genetic disorders and I worked on stem cells from both research perspectives and manufacturing perspectives so I started my life as a student for doing research on stem cells and then I worked in Oxford as a researcher on stem cells mm -hmm. and after that I moved to biotech companies working on manufacturing of stem cells so yeah yeah so what is your current project now uh, the last project I worked on was um, uh, creating, okay, I'll make it less complicated, was creating immunotherapy for cancer using stem cells. Yes. I yeah. think I read quite a bit about that. But anyway, back to the main topic. Speak to me now like I'm five years old, like I know nothing. So the first question is like, what is stem cells and how many types of stem cells are there? Um, very simply, stem cells are, let's say they're the gold standard of cells in the body which are capable of giving, giving um, um, all types of stem cells. Uh, if you imagine like in your body you have how many? 13,000 billion cells in your body. How many? 13,000 billion. So it's, how many zero? Uh, it's 13 and next to it 12 zeros. Okay. okay. And all of them different types mm -hmm. and doing different functions. And imagine this cell in the skin is different than the cell in the stomach, it's different okay. than the cell in the heart. And imagine all these cells came from one single cell. This is what we call stem cell. Types of stem cells, they are classified according to the what we call plasticity. So mm -hmm. the cells are very flexible, which are we call the gold standards, which are the cell, the stem cell that's capable of giving almost all kinds of stem cells in your body. Mm -hmm. And this cell does not exist now in your body because it's only prenatal cells, like before you're born as a human being. And the other type of stem cells, which is the adult stem cells, the one we're working with now in our bodies. And these stem cells are less flexible than mm -hmm. the one that prenatally existed in before we get birth. We call adult stem cells. And these cells have less flexibility. They give some types of stem cells, some types of cells, but much, much less than the embryonic stem cells. And you can get them mainly from the bone marrow or from the fat tissue, the yeah. adipose. So these are the, and there is the umbilical cord stem cells, which are in the umbilical cord and on birth. Like they take from the babies, they take these stem cells yeah. in the umbilical cord. And those cells can only give blood. Alright, so like, well, from that card I can only like treat disease related to like blood disorders and type thing? Mainly yes, because we, they are what we call hematopoietic stem cells. Means, if you look at it as if, as, if, as if it's a tree, okay? The top of the tree, which can give all types of leaves and roots and everything, is the embryonic stem cells. I forget about this now. It's, all right. it's gone. So, how stem cell works? Um, stem cell works, there are many possible scenarios of stem cell mode of action. So in the early time, there are two possible mechanisms, which mm -hmm. is what we call trophic effect. It's, it's, it's very simply means stem cells produce substances, some people claim they're growth factors, which are capable of healing local tissues or inducing local stem cells to regenerate. The other scenario is the stem cells the stem cells themselves differentiate into the damaged tissue like to give to replace the damaged tissues. So they either replace the damaged tissue or release factors to enhance the local tissue to replace the damaged tissue. Alright, so just another question which is quite important. Can your stem cells work on my body? Ah, okay. It's uh, it's 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 a tricky question because what we're talking about is um, 
Let's say I get your stem cell because you got really good skin genetically. Mm. Then I bottle it. I take it home. I put on my skin. Well, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so how then? Stem cell therapy is very complicated. Okay. And working on this field, I can tell you, is not very straightforward procedure. No, it doesn't work like that. It's so. Uh, how about plant stem cells and animal stem cells, for example? Would they work on human skin? Uh, because my view is mostly like cosmetics and what to do with the skin, so... Well, I understand. That's why I'm, I'm here to just make it clear what stem cell therapy for and what's not for. Because many people believe that stem cells, they are magic, which is true, it's magic. However, it's still in the infancy phase. There are a lot of research and there are a lot of institutions working on stem cell therapy. So you cannot, you cannot, it's, you cannot easily or simply say, okay, we have stem cell treatment for skin, because it's not that straightforward. Okay. Stem cell therapy is for more complicated diseases mm -hmm. and they are being conducted in a very highly reputable uh, institutes of research under a strict regulation from the regulatory bodies like the FDA in America and in Europe there is the, uh, I think, EMEA. So we have to be careful when we, when we use the word stem cell treatment. You have, to be, you have to be very careful because this, this procedure is very sophisticated and very strictly regulated. So, I can say that in general, there are no stem cells in a bottle. Uh, well, this is the dream we're working on now, but we... Getting there. Off the shelf, yeah. We, we call it off the shelf stem cells. And this project is, um, I'm saying it's, 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 it's billion pounds projects. And many companies are working on it to get what you're saying, which is off the shelf stem cells. And now scientists are getting there, but... Um, is, is a long trip. It's not really very okay. straightforward. What I, I'm, I'm just here to, to make it clear what yeah. stem cell is for because people have to be very, not careful, but they have to be aware of, of what's being mm. claimed in the market. In my country, they got like, um, they advertise mm. uh, stem cell and cosmetics product that mm. you can take home and put on your skin. Mm. They advise about stem cell procedure that you can somehow like invest, invest your skin and then put stem cell on or inject it on that type thing mm. and <clears throat> yeah because i've been here with you for a while so i know that they are not what they are it's yeah it's a different story so mm. what i'm saying is let's i'll give you another example you remember when i told you about the embryonic stem cells which are mm -hmm. the gold stem cells which do you don't have them now the type of stem cells we are working on now Actually, there is a Japanese scientist in 2006 who managed to convert skin cells into stem cells. Okay. And these cells are exactly the same as the one of the embryos. So he got Nobel Prize for this uh, discovery in 2012. And since then, we all the stem cell experts, all our teams and everyone in the world is working on this kind of stem cells, which is converting your stem cell into embryonic stem cells and then work on it either for diabetes or for uh, muscle, muscular dystrophy or for cancer, for serious diseases. And, and still... My beauty is a serious topic. Yeah, of course it is. And everyone has the right to look after himself because if, the, if you have a healthy body, it's reflected in your skin. And if you have a healthy mind, it's reflected in your skin. And it's, it's very important. Everyone has the right to work on his, uh, on his outlook, which is fair point. To just, the point is you have to know exactly the science, a little bit of science behind of what's going on. So I, I said this example of the generated stem cells from skin because this is a very sophisticated protocol and million and million of pounds are spent on that. And it's still under clinical trials. So many trials are being conducted now for stem cell implantation. And they are progressing, but they are not yet in the phase of stem cell in a bottle. All right. So another question a bit more specific. Many companies from the US and even European companies they are advertising for using growth factors in their products, also cosmetics products that you can take off, mm -hmm. put it on your skin. Mm -hmm. So how do you think about this? Could they be kind of more realistic than stem cells? Could they have more 
explanation okay. that if they can actually work. Okay, again, I haven't had a look to the companies we're talking about, but from science perspective, yeah, first of all, let's take the stem cell box off the equation. Yeah. Because it is not. Fine. Okay, so this is a big cross. Stem cell for skin doesn't exist. The true stem cells. Yes. So okay. this is definitely out of the box. So now we are talking about stem cell related. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we go, we can explain this now. So what we're talking about is the other scenario, which is stem cell um, released substances, which are substances released from stem cells in the culture. And they are mixed of growth factors and other, and other substances. And they might have effect, yes, they might. Uh, because in our research, we use what we call conditioned media. Mm -hmm. Conditioned media means a media that has been used to culture stem cells. And you take this media after two days, and this media is rich with stem cell substance, and then you use this media for another research, and it gives effect. So yeah, this is scientifically proper conditioned media because if you culture cells on the media, they release factors. Yeah. Having said that, it's, it's complicated from manufacturing as well. Now I'm talking from manufacturing perspectives because we don't know exactly what is in that media. How do we test it? How do we repeat it? Is it that the batch batch variability is good? Really? You cannot just like get what you want from it. For example, if you're looking for growth factor, you're gonna filter and just get the growth factor things out and then wait it. No, not really, because otherwise you would go for a recombinant growth factor. Why would you take it? If you, if you want to filter it, and if you know what you're looking for, why don't you just manufacture it using uh, recombinant DNA technology in bacteria, like insulin, for instance, insulin. Insulin now has been manufacturing using recombinant DNA technology, mm -hmm. which is you have the gene, you put it in, in the bacteria, and then you get the insulin, right? So you have it recombinant, recombinant and pure. So if you know what you're looking for, you can easily just manufacture the recombinant growth factors themselves. You don't have to use conditioned media. You see what I mean? Yeah. So given that, like, I got the conditioned media, mm. and then there are lots of growth factors in it, different type growth factors, mm. and the conditioned media was specifically designed for, like, the skin. Let's put it that way. Mm. It was, like, skin cells inside okay. people. Okay. So um. can I now somehow bottle it and okay, take it off? <laughs> You are very keen on bottling stuff and taking it home. Yeah. Okay, um, I will take it from what you said. I will assume that you already have the perfect condition media. Yeah. And you want to use it, right? Yeah, and every single time I can make the same exactly perfect media. No, it's not going to happen. Okay. It's not, no, it's, this is going to happen because the batch batch variability is uncontrollable. If you have cells growing in and put the media on them, there is no way on the earth to control the released growth factor from these cells. There is no way to control them and have them exact the same every single time. So what I'm saying from manufacturing perspectives, this is uh, is not feasible. Actually, it's not possible. All right, let's say I got a good patch and I got a bad, bad one. Okay. So how, you have to define how would you tell exactly what's good or what's bad. This is another question because it's 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 like all right. It's like sea water. Mm -hmm. Just take it from anywhere, like at least in, in the seawater you can test it. But okay, it's, I got a batch, whatever quality okay, is it? Let's say you take a batch. Can I bottle it then? Okay, if you want to bottle it again, okay. Um, okay, I will go with you. If you want to bottle it and then use it for the skin, you have two problems here actually. I'm not here to mention problems, I'm just creating awareness. First of all, growth factors need to be preserved, otherwise, they will not be functional. Mm -hmm. And preservation, use, usually you put them in minus 80, or you freeze dry them so they are powder. Mm -hmm. Those are the main two ways to keep them functional for a long time. There might be, there might be some preservatives, but I'm not sure how far they affect the effect, the effectiveness of them and the activity. I'm not sure of that. Even that. Let's say, okay, you have a fresh media, you take it now from the lab and you put it in your face. Okay, I'll go that far. You have another problem, which is your skin is very thick. And you really have to make sure that the growth factors are penetrating the skin, going deep.
growth factors and other things. If you have a very low concentration of these materials, it's still considered cosmetics. You know that if you reach certain concentration, it's tr now it's switched to being pharmaceutics. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's why many companies, if they have growth factors or other things, has to be limited to very low concentration. Otherwise, if it goes beyond a certain concentration, it would be automatically considered as a drug. Mm -hmm. And it falls under the regulatory criteria, yeah. so it's uh, it's 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 very complicated procedure to include these things. So I will. I'm more than happy to see you again. You are, you know that you are a friend, and you are more than welcome anytime. So if you have questions next time, just put like a Q and A session, and I'm more than happy to answer the questions whenever I see you next. So yeah. Hi there. Love you. Love you. Love you. No, no Thank you anyway. You're welcome. Nice to see you.